Um, maybe there's an industry where they're beginning to wake up to this idea um, that as, as in particular as you start to go to um, some more complex therapeutics um, the size of the molecule that they're working with is getting bigger and bigger so from small molecule drugs um, you're starting to see people now thinking about um, immunoglobulins and much larger materials those are, are great examples of proteins and materials that um, really like to find their way to interfaces. Um, that might be the interface between, say, um, the artery and the blood. Um, that might be the interface between a vial that you're trying to sell the material in and the air that's above it. And so you typically will find molecules find their way to an interface and then they may denature or they may change. And so uh, we've been very interested in trying to understand the flow of very large uh, molecules that might be used in therapeutics eventually because uh, you've got to make sure that they flow through a nozzle um, without breaking them down. You can't shear degrade them. But then when you store them uh, sitting in a vial, you've got to make sure that they don't come to an interface, uh, unfold. Uh, proteins are very good at changing their configuration when they find themselves near something different. And you'd like to make sure that they stay in the form that you uh, designed them to be delivered to the human body in. Um, the energy initiative has been fantastic for uh, connecting us with uh, um, the central research department of large companies, um, particularly for me and my group in this flow assurance area. So this idea that there are many complicated ways that a process can go wrong um, and they might like to understand that. Um, well, we tend to develop techniques uh, that might be of use to um, central research uh, um, development uh, uh, parts of large companies. And those companies are so large and spread out around the world that it can be very hard to connect with them. It's uh, the, you know, the billion dollar MIT connecting with a billion dollar in industry. Um, uh, and sometimes you really need uh, an interface between the two and the energy initiative has been fantastic for that. So. Um, Frequently, again, because companies are paying into a, um, a kind of a consortium uh, view, you know, that's, that's been a case where maybe some problems are distilled down into basic problems that aren't as proprietary. And, and if you spend some time working on it, maybe you find a solution that can be useful to more than one company. Yeah, what MIT doesn't do well and what we're not really designed to do well is the kind of let's test this for 10 million cycles. Let's, uh, you know, let's test this for three years in the temperature of Arizona's summer and, you know, and, and uh, so on. That's not what we do. That's the kind of next step, right? And clearly that's an important step at taking something to market, right? Uh, if I do this, uh, how many cycles before it breaks? You know, how many times can I wash it before the coating fails? But what we do much better is understand what physics should we look at? What's the chemistry that's important? You know, what are the fundamentals behind it? Um, what works really well with industry is to team up with a company that has the technicians, has the labs that can do the 10 million cycles to failure. But uh, let us try and figure out the basics and then work with company scientists or company engineers to do those kinds of tests. Um, and and that's, that's, that's maybe where IOP really plays a great role is to, is to connect us with a company that's got a problem, wants to understand the basics, and is willing to put the time and effort and resources behind it to make sure that those ideas can actually be translated to the marketplace.